on that note, let's talk silver. Uh, one of the biggest arguments that I hear about stacking silver is that it's the poor man's gold and its supply is dwindling while the demand is rising. For example, Eric Sprott is saying that for every dollar of gold sold, one dollar of silver is also sold, yet their prices are 50 to 1, and obviously this can't continue. Do those two arguments contradict each other? If, if silver is remonetized, wouldn't its supply become an issue? Uh, why would you base your monetary supply system on a supply of metal that's running out? You are correct when it comes to silver. It will run out. Uh, the Geologic Service of America uh, said a few years ago it will be the first element that will be extinct. Uh, and they weren't even thinking about investment demand. They were just talking about because it's become such a popular industrial metal. Uh, so, yeah, it will be extinct. But the fact is no one is talking about a silver standard. They are simply talking about a gold standard. And silver being, uh, as you say, poor man's gold, has always been monetary. Uh, it's primarily monetary. It just happens to be that in, in the recent decades, they found such amazing uses for it. It's the commodity with the second most uses on the planet after crude oil. So it will all be gone for industrial purposes. But that said, that doesn't change the fact that it's always been a monetary metal and always will be. And that's why I believe the gold-silver ratio, which has been heavily manipulated by this paper cartel, will easily go back to its historical norm of 15 to 1, and it may go significantly lower. But when it comes to uh, um, money itself and the money standard, I don't think anyone believes there's going to be a silver standard. I think you're going to have gold uh, becomes the standard that things are that money is backed by, and silver will just go along for the ride. Uh, likely not as a monetized metal, simply because people will recognize its value. On that note, Ron Paul is obviously a big proponent of the gold standard. Are you concerned that in a world completely addicted to credit, it's no longer possible to even entertain the idea of sound money just based on the fact how rigid it is? No, I don't think it's possible to maintain the idea of paper money. Uh, there's nothing rigid about gold. Again, this is propaganda. What's rigid about it? You mean you can't print money and therefore create asset bubbles? And uh, what is all this printing money done that's so good? It's literally destroyed the world. Oh, oh, yes, that's right. It's not It's not rigid, though. We'll give it that. They can print all they want. The fact is, they, you know, you have a fiat currency system and the government's overprint and hyperinflated. There's nothing positive about it. And it doesn't matter if it's rigid or not. The, the thing that makes a gold standard so useful, in why it's the only thing that's ever worked, is because it is rigid. Because it does not allow politicians to do what they want, to get votes. And it doesn't allow bankers to get rich enough to pay the politicians to do what they want. It's not a matter of will they do a gold standard or, or whether or not Ron Paul supports it. it. It will happen. It always happens. I mean, it has happened literally dozens of times. It's happened in every major country and sometimes multiple times. There will be a gold standard again. And, you know, I encourage anyone listening just Google, uh, why is gold money San Diego capital? And they do a, a nice little five or 10 minute thing. And they, they go over all the elements of the periodic table, explaining why uh, gold and then silver and, and platinum have monetary value. Because there's nothing else that meets the definition of money, which is what I talk about in all my presentations. The definition of money, not the definition of, of currency, where you can, it means it has to be a store of value, there has to be, a, you have to recognize how much there is out there. Uh, you know, there's all those kind of things. And only gold and silver meet those. And every time they try to use something else, it fails. Let's do a fun one. Uh, a Ford Mustang, I just looked it up. A Ford Mustang in 1960s cost about four grand. And at the time, it was around 100 ounces of gold. Today, you can buy a more technologically advanced Mustang for about 25 ounces of gold. This means that those who entered the workforce in the 60s and the 70s and are retiring today, if they saved in gold instead of dollars, they could be buying durable goods, basically getting 75, 80% off. Will this continue for our generation or did the baby boomers catch a, a very unique time in history? Yeah, well, the, the baby boomers were around during a gold standard and as a result, it was stable money. You know, that's no longer the case. Um, in in 1960s, uh, in fact, my my parents had a, a Mustang in the 60s, but you, you know the late 60s, which was right before the gold standard was abandoned. I mean, that was the optimal time for the United States economy, and it was the optimal time for the value of the dollar. You know, now here we are, 40 years later, and the dollar is on its last legs, and uh, unfortunately, all the other currencies are are anchored to it. As far as I'm concerned, 
anyone alive today are going to feel the impact of this for for many decades. But anyone who's even a child is going to be for many decades feeling the impact of what has been wrought over the past four decades. Do you see if you extrapolate this in the future, do you see the Mustang going from 100 ounces to 25 ounces to five ounces to maybe an ounce? Or is this kind of a unique opportunity that the baby boomers caught that we, we no longer can? Look, the price of gold has been suppressed by a, a factor of 10 minimum. I do the simple math to get my, I call it a price target, even though it's it's not really, I mean, gold's not an investment. It's just a matter of how much the dollar depreciates against it. Gold doesn't do anything. But if you do the same math that got you to $850 in 1980, which is just the amount of adjusted uh, monetary base divided by the amount of uh, gold reserves of the government, you get fifteen dollars to $20,000 an ounce. Of course, the mo- we know just from stuff like the $16 trillion of secret loans and the Fed swap facility, for instance, which they don't count as printing money, they call it swaps instead of instead of loans, there's far more than they say. And I will bet my life that we don't have the gold that we say. We may have none of it of the 8,133 tons. And if we do have some of it, it's not, it's very little. So I think because of this suppression of, to keep the dollar uh, strong, you have gold trading way below its equilibrium value. So yeah, the Mustang is going to, in time, cost uh, more ounces of gold because uh, gold needs to get to its equilibrium level. Once it gets to that equilibrium level, theoretically, a Mustang, assuming people still like the Mustang, should cost the same amount of gold today as it does 50 years from now. Back to silver. Uh, Silver was stuck at five bucks for almost 30 years. Is there any chance of that repeating again? After all, no one lives forever, and should we be prepared for our grandchildren spending the silver that we saved? Well, it's never going to five dollars again. I mean, it may never go to $20 again. For what I say about gold being suppressed, silver is dramatically more so. Silver should be between $1,000 and $4,000 an ounce today. And as we were just talking about, literally the supply is going to run out at some point soon. There's only about a billion ounces or so above ground. That's only $30 billion at today's prices. I mean, that, that'll go in a heartbeat. Plus, remember, most of silver is byproduct from uh, lead and zinc mines, uh, some copper mines. There's a good chance that that the you know that we will run out and price of silver will approach the price of gold at some point in the future. So it's never going to go to five dollars an ounce just on regular supply and demand, let alone when real money takes over and uh, and it becomes priceless. Do you see it hanging out at thirty for the next ten years? No, I think it should be a thousand to four thousand today, literally today. That's what if it weren't manipulated, I think that's where it would be. And if you're saying thirty dollars for the next ten years, you're saying not only are they are they going, you're saying that the system will be able to be maintained for ten years. I'd be surprised if it could be maintained for ten months. What's your take on cryptocurrencies like uh, Bitcoin? They have some very attractive properties that mimic those of precious metals, with the exception of one, of course, is that they're not real. But uh, neither are retirement accounts, dollars, promissory notes, fractional reserve. At least the Bitcoin system can't be destroyed no more than you can destroy file sharing on the Internet. Uh, the supply is hard capped. It's exponentially more difficult to, to create each new coin. It's anonymous. There's no chargebacks. There's sure. no way any of these kind of things are you, know, you can't just invent a coin. Uh, a currency. I mean, I have uh, I have one of these. Uh, someone sent me one of these Liberty dollars, mm-hmm. and it's backed by nothing. I mean, you could. Uh, frankly, I think these these coins, uh, even Bitcoin, they're just attempts to 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 uh, rebel against the system. And while I appreciate that, again, there's a definition of money. Bitcoin doesn't meet any of those things. I mean, it doesn't even meet the things. That the uh, that the dollar meets just because someone wants there to be an alternative currency, that doesn't mean it's worth anything. It's still just a coin backed by nothing, and ultimately, the only thing that's going to going to be universally accepted in this global world is going to be gold and silver because it's the only things that have ever worked in history. Andy, where do we find you on the wild world of internet? Well, I'm the marketing director at Miles Franklin. We're one of the largest bullion dealers in America. I write a free blog every day. You can go to milesfranklin.com or you can email me at ahoffman at milesfranklin.com. Thank you very much for joining me today. You're welcome.